We're not trying to follow any thought but radical. Radical. Are you radical? I love this graphic because the center eye points the attention to I, me, you. Are you a radical child of God or are you nominal? I believe that Jesus still is available and the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The practical things in life can get in the way of somebody who tries to reason them out by means of what will somebody think about this. When we look beyond impossibility and start seeing a radical possibility, when we start seeing what God could do, if that we would just start being radical, if we would start by being radical for the things of God. Jesus still has the ability to change somebody's life if that Jesus still had a people that really believed that one touch of his hand would transform them. Radical praise will always have a sound of freedom yes. and it will resonate with every tone that will be freedom and it will be displayed with every motion of freedom. And anything less than that is not radical praise. If it's not free, if it's not freedom, if it's not with a free heart, if it's not with a free spirit, you ain't freed in it, you ain't given a radical praise. You may be giving some praise, but you ain't given up a radical praise. I believe that there's a radical praise on the inside of you that's been trying to get out ever since the day that Jesus Christ came and bought you. I think he's been trying to get out of you something that he deposited on the inside of you. I imagine when I think of this kind of radical service that Jesus was sitting at the right hand of the Father, as it's often quoted, and what Jesus did, he was so moved, so compelled, Jesus stood up and he watched. And Stephen, they say, had a face of an angel. You see, when you're so radical in your service for God, when you're so full of the Holy Spirit, the very countenance on your face changes because you are a reflection of God's love. My question to you as you're sitting in these seats today, are you radically serving God? What is God calling you to do? You see, if we really want to grow this church, if we really want to change our community, it's up to you to radically serve. Because when Stephen and his six brothers were doing what they were called to do, it says the church began to multiply. They did not think that their particular task in serving God was lesser than. They believed what they were called to do was a great calling. Miracles, signs, and wonders followed the man of God who was supposed to be serving orphans and widows. Too many people want a platform, but when you have radical service, God will follow you wherever you go. And that's what God's calling us to do in radical service today. But over the last five or six decades in our country, I think we've begun to see a real erosion of that biblical foundation that we've had. Because it used to be that we could mention the name Jesus Christ and everybody would know who we were talking about. You could talk about things within the Bible and there would be a level of understanding. But you can go out on the street nowadays and talk about Jesus, talk about the things of God and they'll look at you like you're a three-legged duck. They don't know the things of God anymore. They don't have that biblical foundation because it's begun to erode over the years. Do you know what a flu shot does? Or what a flu shot is? A flu shot gives you just enough of what it is that you're wanting to fight against so your body will build up immunities to that. If we're not careful, we'll get just enough Jesus that we're inoculated to the gospel of Jesus Christ and it'll no longer have the power to transform our lives or others. No longer have a way to uh, stand up against those attacks from the enemy. Here's a simple prescription for radical discipleship. What if we started by giving God 10 minutes a day? Every day. Radical discipleship is consistent discipleship. It's a challenge I have for you today to be a radical disciple because if it's not us, then who? And if it's not now, then when? And if it's not here, then where? As the body of Christ, we have to be radical disciples. When stress and when all these things start to hit us, fear starts to arrive. And fear starts to push away your faith. Sometimes you got to pray for yourself. Stop relying on everybody else to pray for you. Sometimes it's God trying to get you to pray through. And that's why your breakthrough doesn't all the time come from the altar. Sometimes your breakthrough comes when you're sitting out at Walmart and he's asking you to do something. When you're sitting at Walmart and he's asking you to walk up to somebody and pray for somebody that's dealing with something that you're going through. I have faith in the one who died on a cross. I have faith in the one who came and paid the debt for my sin. I have faith in the one. I have faith.
The same hand that got bit is the same hand that laid hands on that man and got healed. You're not catching something. See, the same hand that you keep getting bit by is the same hand that's going to start walking up to people and you're going to start seeing people get healed. You're going to start seeing people get delivered. You're going to start seeing people get saved. Because when this hand falls, hey, I've been through something. If you would just start walking up to people and being obedient and start looking at God and saying, I'm going to do whatever it is, come hell or high water. I'm going to do whatever it is. I don't care how depressed I feel today. I don't care how low on faith I feel today. I'm going to do it anyways. God says, I want a radical evangelism coming from this house. God says, I want radical praise coming from this house. God says, I want some radical disciples raised up in this house. And he said, I want some radical people of faith.